My name's Matt Jones, I'm a professional freestyle mountain bike rider. We're in my garden where I've built all these dirt jumps to ride during lockdown and we're going to talk about my Hurricane Performante and GT3. I started mountain biking when me and my twin brother discovered some jumps in the woods but as a career it was when I left school I, I chose not to go to university and go to mountain bike events all around the world and it kind of played out alright so I'm still doing it today, seven years down the line. Red Bull sponsored me when I was just coming up to turning 18 which was like a dream come true. In, in mountain biking, extreme sports, action sports, Red Bull is like the pinnacle, there's a proper prestigious sponsor and I never thought that would happen and when it did it literally changed my life and that was yeah, like I say, seven years ago, so they're still supporting me now and we do awesome projects and events together. Over my career, I've been ranked number one in the UK quite a few times and ninth in the world, which is pretty good, but always wanted a bit more than that. And uh, the main thing is I've learned quite a few tricks that no one's ever brought to competitions, like 720 no-handers. I did a backflip where I landed, stood on this big log up in the air, which was quite cool. 360 table into the Red Bull cabin. He's going to play his... Well, hopefully we get to see that backflip through, man. Yes, oh, even, even bigger than his first run. And we've won events in Colorado, in America, France, Switzerland. A few different countries, actually, but also had quite a few big crashes and smashed myself to bits, so... Take rough with the smooth. So far this year, just, it's just cancellation after cancellation. I was supposed to be travelling loads and visiting new places, but... It's a bit of a waiting game to be honest, but there's a big event in America called Red Bull Rampage, which is coming around October, so hopefully we'll be back in business then. And Innsbruck, Austria is going ahead in September. So yeah, there's a few, few events that are going to be cool, but weird old year being sat at home, which is re the reason for this place to be honest. So this is my lockdown backyard setup. This was just a grass field, quite a nice location, and I've absolutely dug it up and churned it into a mountain bike freestyle area where there's jumps everywhere, pump tracks and stuff, and that was all because I was stuck at home for lockdown, and I'd have gone mad within two days. And honestly, first day of lockdown, we put shovels in the ground and started building this. So it's kept me occupied, it's kept me busy making YouTube videos and trying out new tricks and things, but mostly it's just been a distraction from not traveling, not competing, and channeling all my attention into something that I think is pretty cool. My whole life growing up it was all about two wheels, it was just bikes, getting up in the air, doing tricks and I don't really know what happened to transition over to four wheels and having an interest in cars because I've never been exposed to cars, I've never been to races, none of my friends ever had cars but I just started watching YouTube videos and learning more and it was like the education process that made me so much more interested in them. As I found out more about engines and technology I was way more fascinated in the actual product and then somewhere along the lines I became kind of I kind of qualified to buy cars. I guess I just saved up and I got a C63, which was my absolute dream car. I never imagined I'd have a V8 car, let alone like a proper German, what I considered a supercar. Whereas now a few years on, like that's still my dream car. They can't say that either of these are because the C63 was it, but it's gone into a whole different realm in the last few months. And now I've got some pretty special cars that I love. So in terms of how I actually got to buy my first supercar, the C63, I, I won a few competitions and that's all like literally cash in the pocket. You win cash at these events, fly home, turn it into pounds and then it was just piling up a bit and I just saved every penny for a car to the point that I drove down south to buy my first C63 estate when I was 19 
bought it but didn't have enough money left over to insure it so I had to go back with insurance because I didn't even consider that at the time and then sold that to buy a house because that was all my savings were tied up in this depreciating car bought a house and then saved up again to buy another C63 which I still had a year ago again still my dream car but I got a coupe drove around with my bike on the roof and took it everywhere it was so loud it was like ridiculous thing I wouldn't be able to have it now I'd be embarrassed and then in the last 12 months stuff's really kind of progressed and I've sort of fallen in a position where I on auto trader you're not looking at like the 30 grand mark suddenly like looking over a hundred grand mark which is ridiculous so I had to learn quick and sort of figure out what what cars actually fit into that category and it turned out the GT3 was like the ultimate daily driver I've taken it on the track and and then the Perf is a step up again but I've never had a four-wheel drive car I was stoked that it was naturally aspirated because like the C63s all the cars have been that I've owned just for how much drama and theatre and what the thing looks like to own something like that to be honest is even a step beyond the GT3 for me but they complement each other I think they're a right pair So I wasn't really aware of SCD and what you guys do or that there are even clubs like that out there where members could meet up and join on the same drives and stuff. But my mate Ed, who's been a member for a couple of years, I think, and has got some cool cars, Ed Warren, he, uh, he's like a friend of a friend and saw that I got some cool cars and got in touch and said, you should join this group, this club, become a member. And we go on drives. And I thought the fact that that exists as an opportunity, because none of my friends have cars where we're going to go on drives together. And I'm sometimes looking for that sort of access to people who have a passion for cars and have cool cars so it seemed like a no-brainer but I joined during lockdown so there were no events on the calendar certainly not for this year so I've been checking it all the time and finally went on a drive a few weeks ago in the South Downs which was honestly the best day in a car I've had, had in my entire life there were three other perfs there and up to this point that's the only one I've ever seen in real life there were GT3s it was insane everyone just nose to nose going through these insane roads <laughs> And to have a lead driver that knew the way, everyone with more walkie-talkies, is like, I've told that story to literally everyone I know. It's the best day, so I can't wait for more. I bought the GT3 end of November last year from a dealership, and I'd never sat in one, never driven one, and had to pay a pretty big deposit just to take it on a test drive. So that was like my little insight into driving one and loved it, like the gravelly engine and everything was so different to anything I'd experienced before. I did want a Gen 2, but I went for a Gen 1 just with all the options on it. I really wanted ceramic brakes, I don't know why, but I, wanted, I needed front lift just to get into, well, to get into this field today, it wouldn't have happened. And options and things were pretty important, but as a car, I just know that no one can fault it. Like everyone on YouTube, everyone I've met that's driven them just say they're the best, so in that category and price range, I thought I, I had to at least give it a try and see what all the fuss is about. GT3 is like so involving for me, taking on a track, every lap I go around and get faster I can't believe that I've trumped the last lap, like my, the experience of grip and how it turns in and how early you can get on the power in a corner is unbelievable, like insane, having a C63 that I span off the road into a ditch and like ever since I'm so like careful of rear wheel drive cars, that thing just looks after me, it's the best, it's honestly the best, the brakes are astonishing and you've got to think that having like I don't have people around me with supercars, so every time I brake harder, that's the first time I've experienced those forces and the same with cornering, and it's been really cool, like, learning. It's been cool, but probably a bit, I'm a bit early to the, the GT3. I probably should have come up through the ranks a bit more. I might not have earned my, earned my place in one, but maybe in a few months, few years, I'll, I'll be able to do the lap times to, to, to do it proud. So the Perf I've had about a month I think, I got it from Romans, bought it from Bonnie, one of the sales ladies there, she was the best, like she made it so easy to buy that car because I was pretty nervous, it was, having only had the GT3 maybe six months before, 
to have another car like it in the lineup was obviously a big outgoing, but quite nerve wracking. And she, I guess, as salespeople do, made it very convincing. And uh, I absolutely love it. It was, it is, it's so different to the GT3. To own two cars, I think they have to have elements that are the same in a way to complement each other, but also to have them diversely different is sick. So four wheel drive feels amazing. The launches in it are ridiculous, but the sound and the looks of it, uh, I think that's what steered me towards it. And weirdly, a normal Hurricane, like the standard one, never interested me. But it was when I saw the Performante, found out about the Nürburgring time, the active aero system and all that, just all that tech into a, a road legal product got me, got me pretty excited about it. So I was on the hunt straight away and Roman's had the best deal. To be honest, I haven't driven the Perf how I want to yet. I took it, oh, that was the one I took on the, the South Downs day, which was ludicrous. Like, almost got myself in a spot of bother a few times, but I'd have only been going the same speed as the guy in front and the guy behind. So I felt, felt like I could keep up, but I want to take it on a track. I want to go abroad, hit some proper passes and stuff. So I'm not in a position to say like how epic it drives yet, but the sound of it is ludicrous. I mean, you can see the like the downpipes and everything glowing from when you follow it. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy bit of kit, but and bronze wheels were a must. I'd like, to have a car with bronze wheels feels pretty sick. But um, no, it's, it's insanely fast and handles so good, but I, I need to like really push it and, and get someone to show me the ropes maybe to tell you exactly what it's capable of because I'm not there yet. To compare the two cars is difficult, but it'd be much harder to say which one I'd keep. I think I'm, I'm yet to like really discover like the raw epicness of the of the Hurricane and like really what what it can do for me and what and how sick it is as a car. But if you told me that someone had broken into my house and stolen one, I think I'd kind of go out and hope that the GT3 was still there because it's, I've, I'm pretty attached to it as my first supercar, having taken it on tracks and had literally an ear to ear grin in it that I wouldn't want to lose that but in a few months time maybe I'll be saying that about the perf and I'll I'd, I'd keep that forever but I've got I've got two for a reason because they are different they're not two of the same thing but right now it's the GT3 that that's number one for me I, I love the thing for me SCD like the big the big factors are like-minded petrol heads all in one place, literally on the same road, following each other. So you get to talk about an experience that's just happened while filling up and then get back on the road. That's like super new for me and a real buzz. And the way you can just plan your year around driving events and they're just all there in a long list of dates and venues ready for the taking. So like I say, I've only done the one, I'm probably one of very few people to have not done more, but I'm gonna do a lot more and they're all, they're all there. So I go, I travel the world for mountain biking, but now there's an opportunity travel the world with cars and yeah what more could you want